Hi everybody, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, we're going to talk about some of the ways that genetic information can be inherited incorrectly from parents to offspring. So first, let's start with something that's called non-disjunction. When we talk about non-disjunction, what we're, di we're discussing is the process of dividing up the genetic information through meiosis. When we have non-disjunction, some amount of genetic information was not completely divided from each other. So we can have non-disjunction either in meiosis one, the first round of division, or in meiosis two, the second round of division. When this non-disjunction occurs in meiosis one, notice we should be splitting up these homologous chromosomes from each other. But if non-disjunction occurs, both of these chromosomes may be pulled into the gametes on this side. At the same time, there's no chromosome here to continue through the process of division. So as we go through meiosis II and ultimately get down to the formation of gametes, notice that two of these gametes have three copies of the genetic information and two of these copies only, or two of these gametes only have one copy of that information. If non-disjunction occurs in meiosis I, none of the gametes that are made actually have the correct amount of genetic information. If non-disjunction occurs in meiosis II, we still have problems, but not as many as we had with meiosis I. So notice that during the first division, we did accurately split up the two homologous chromosomes. As we went through and started to divide the second time, Notice that one of my chromosomes split in half normally, but the other did not split in half. This ended up with the generation of one gamete that had three copies of the information, one gamete with just one copy, but notice two gametes that are completely normal. So non-disjunction doesn't always impact gametes equally. The later in the process we have this issue, the more likely we are to get some normal gametes. If it happens at the very beginning, we're always going to generate gametes that are incorrect. Either they have three copies of the information or they only have one. Ultimately, if we were to create offspring with these gametes, so say that this is what the eggs looked like from mom, uh, the sperm from dad being completely normal, when we fuse those together, we create something that's called aneuploidy. So aneuploidy is a way to, for us to describe that we have the wrong number of chromosomes. Maybe we have three. If we have that, that's something called trisomy. So in trisomy, we have three copies of something that we were supposed to only have two copies of. Or perhaps we have what's called monosomy where I have one copy of something that I was supposed to have two copies of. Both of those are examples of what we call aneuploidy. So aneuploidy, my big fancy science word for you have too many or you have not enough chromosomes. Let's look at an example of aneuploidy, both with our autosomes, our normal chromosomes, as well as our sex chromosomes, X and Y. So when we talk about aneuploidy of the autosomes, a good example of this is what we call Down syndrome. Down syndrome is also known as trisomy 21. Remember on the previous slide, I used this word. Trisomy means three chromosomes and 21 tells me which one we have three copies of. So we're looking at a karyotype that shows all of the chromosomes inside a cell. And if you notice, when we get to chromosome number 21, one of my autosomes, instead of just having two copies of it, we actually have three copies of it. So the distinct appearances uh, and the distinct medical conditions that often occur with co concurrent with Down syndrome come from the fact that we have three copies of these directions instead of just two. Interestingly, the rate of Down syndrome or the likelihood of this particular aneuploidy developing is actually very strongly linked to the age of a mother. 
So as a mother ages, non-disjunction of the 21st chromosome becomes more likely. So notice very early in a female's reproductive years, the, the chances are much lower. But as we go between the ages of 40 and 45, notice that that risk skyrockets. The process of meiosis is a little less likely to be accurate as a mother ages. So Down syndrome, an example of non-disjunction that affected the autosomes. So a nuploidy, the wrong number of, of chromosomes, in particular, it's those autosomes. When we talk about a nuploidy with the sex chromosomes, we typically see things that are a little bit less severe than with the autosomes. What I mean by that is typically the, the, uh, the phenotypes and the disorders that come along with sex chromosome a nuploidy is not lethal. What is, is pretty much true across the board though, is if your number of sex chromosomes is inaccurate, so a nuploidy of the sex chromosomes, this is always going to lead to sterility, meaning you cannot create your own offspring. So the two most common kinds of sex chromosome non-disjunction are Turner syndrome and Klinefelter syndrome. And as you can see in the picture over here, Turner syndrome is something that uh, in, impacts females. In Turner syndrome, the female has only one copy instead of two copies of the X chromosome. This leads to a variety of different appearances as we see listed here. So things like a short stature or a different uh, appearance of the neck, uh, various things, reproductive organs being underdeveloped. In Klinefelter syndrome, a male has two copies of the X chromosome, but also has a Y chromosome. Again, this is going to lead to sterility, the inability to reproduce, but it'll also lead to some characteristics that are more feminine. So for example, the development of breasts in the chest or uh, a differential arrangement of the pubic hair closer to what would be seen in a female. Both of these conditions do not impact life expectancy but again, because it is a disorder with the sex chromosomes, reproduction is dramatically impacted. In addition to having the wrong number of chromosomes being passed along to offspring, it is also possible for genetic information to be changed from one, in one generation to the next. So there are several different ways that we can change information. As we start looking at these, here's a big picture idea. The larger the change, the more different we are than normal, the more severe those effects are going to be. So let's look at some examples of the different types of ways we can change the genome. Consider which of these might be more or less dangerous or more or less severe. Let's start what's called, with what's called a deletion. Just like its name would suggest, in a deletion, a small part of a chromosome, so for example, gene D, is simply removed from the genome. Depending on which gene this is, or how many genes are, are impacted by this deletion, these can be quite serious. That information is simply gone. We could also experience what's called a duplication. Again, just like a, its name sounds, in a duplication, a gene or a set of genes is incorporated more than once into the offspring's chromosomes. As we transition into our bottom two, perhaps more serious versions of chromosomal alterations, uh, we encounter what's called an inversion. In an inversion, we take a segment of genetic information and we invert it or we flip it the opposite direction. So instead of going in alphabetical order, now those genes are backwards compared to how they were previously, an inversion. The final way that chromosomes can be altered is what's called a translocation. And in a translocation, genetic information from one chromosome is swapped with genetic information from another chromosome. Now I have a completely different set of genes on this chromosome than I had previously. And notice both of these chromosomes are impacted by this. A translocation can have very large effects 
in in a cell here's my wink wink nudge nudge as you're studying this for the quiz and the exam make sure you can identify each of these types of changes in an image so if I give you this picture and I, I ask you what happened you would want to tell me that a deletion happened this gene is gone or if I gave you this picture and I showed you this and I showed you this you'd want to be able to tell me it's a duplication or an inversion or a translocation so as you're studying these things not only do you need to be able to describe what happens make sure you can identify them as well so let's look at some examples of these changes to chromosomes some of the conditions that that they cause or regulate the first one we're going to talk about is something called Cri du Chat syndrome Cri du Chat syndrome literally means the cry of the cat and this syndrome is named because the way that these infants cry sounds a lot like a cat when a cat is crying so Cri du Chat syndrome is caused by a deletion on chromosome number five remember with a deletion that information is just gone we don't have it anymore so not having that second set of information on chromosome 5 leads to a variety of different changes including the structure of of the vocal cords leading to this cry including to differential shapes of the eyes or the nose uh, many different patterns that we see when that that section of the fifth chromosome is deleted so Cri du Chat syndrome an example of a deletion if we look at fruit flies Thomas Hunt Morgan's favorite right we can see a really good example of duplication so in fruit flies on the X chromosome they have a gene called the bar region and the bar region uh, contains the genetic information that dictates the shape of the flies eyeball this gene can be and, and sometimes is duplicated so instead of having one copy of of this bar region a fly could have two copies of of that bar region or even three copies of that bar region as we look at the different numbers of copies that we see in the genetic information of these offspring notice that the more duplications we have the more severely that eye shape is going to deviate from normal so an example of duplication is the changing shape of the eyeball in these flies they have more than one set of information for this gene and that leads to these changes we can also look at something called chronic myelogenous leukemia this is a type of cancer leukemia cml chronic myelogenous leukemia is caused by a translocation remember that a translocation means that two chromosomes switch information with one another in the case of CML chromosome number 9 changes information with chromosome number 22 we do this process of translocation when this happens all of the information that used to be at the end of chromosome 9 is not anymore it's down on on a different chromosome and vice versa all of the information that was supposed to be on 22 is now up on 9 so both sets of information have gone to completely different locations in the genome and because of these differential locations we end up developing this cancer this leukemia so we actually have a special name for chromosome 22 when it's undergone translocation that name like we see here it's called the Philadelphia chromosome a very small chromosome compared to what it's supposed to be the Philadelphia chromosome formed because we did translocation so big picture what did we talk about in terms of the ways that genetic information going from parent to offspring can be passed along incorrectly the first thing we talked about was non disjunction remember in non disjunction the way that we try to, to divide that genetic information didn't go correctly some gametes got three copies some gametes got one we didn't equally divide the information we also talked about deletions remember that in deletions some information is simply removed and if it's gone that can lead to dramatic effects in the offspring 
we can do duplications where one gene is repeated two or three or more times altering the way that it's expressed inversions where we flip the order of those genes on a chromosome and finally translocations where that genetic information moves from one chromosome to the next. Remember, when we're talking about any of these different chromosomal abnormalities, each of your chromosomes has a specific set of genes and they do specific jobs. So when we look at a deletion, when we look at a translocation or non-disjunction, all of these can lead to very severe outcomes on the offspring because they need all of that genetic information and they need it in the correct place of the genome. So like we said before, remember, the more we change the genetic information, the more severe the effects are on the offspring.